Claro andaré, en tus manos estaré, siempre ha sido bien. Yo sé que tú mueves montañas, yo creo en ti, sé que lo harás otra vez, abriste el mar en el desierto, yo creo en ti, sé que lo harás otra vez, I've seen you move. You move the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way and I believe I'll see you do it again. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence, you never fail. Spanish chorus, en ti confiaré. Tu promesa sigue en pie, tú eres fiel. Confiar o andaré, en tus manos estaré, siempre ha sido fiel. Yo sé que tú mueves montañas, yo creo en ti, sé que lo harás otra vez, abriste el mar en el desierto, yo creo en ti, sé que lo harás otra vez, I've seen you move. You move the mountains, and I believe I see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I believe I see you do it again. Yo sé que tú mueves montañas. Yo creo en ti. Sé que lo harás otra vez, abriste el mar en el desierto, yo creo en ti, sé que lo harás otra vez, sé que lo harás otra vez.
Praise the Lord. God is good tonight. We thank everybody for joining us on our live stream. We pray that you are blessed there at home and this, you feel the Spirit of the Lord there in your homes just as if we were here in person. We love you all and thank you all and worship along with us there in your homes. praise tonight. At this time, before we ask our, our pastor, Brother Oliver, to come, we just want to remind our church family about uh, tithing and giving online at mbgchurchofgod.com, and you can continue to mail those in. Also, just want to remind everybody, once again, we are having a drive-in service this coming Sunday at 10.30 a.m., just like we did last week, and 
We thank everybody who was able to join us for that. Pray that even more can come out this, this coming Sunday. Brother Oliver, would you come and bring us the message tonight? Praise the Lord. I'd like to thank everyone for the drive-in service Sunday. Good to see each one, even though I didn't get to talk to many. It's good to see you. What an awesome God we serve. I believe he's doing great and mighty things. I love Jesus tonight. Amen. I know he loves you. He loves me. He loves this world. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, I like to change that. For God so loved sinners that he's sent his only begotten son. I thank him tonight. Have your Bibles. I'm going to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10. I'd like to read verses 19 through 23. How the message, we can be close to God. My decision, I can be close to God. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our conscience, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. We came to worship you, Lord, to lift up your name. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. Lord, during this trying time in our lives, during, Lord, when we've been separated, quarantined, and all these things, we thank you, Lord, that you've been there. You're leading us through, and God, we believe there's going to be a place of victory. We're asking you to touch each and every family in our church, everyone that's watching tonight, everyone that's not able to watch. I pray, God, you'd touch them in a special way. Minister to them, Lord, as only you can. Praying, God, that your spirit would go, that you'd heal those that are sick, touch those that are discouraged, strengthen those, Lord, that are going through hard times. Lord, that we might face the future with boldness, Lord, and with courage and with faith. Ask your blessings and your favor, Lord, tonight on this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I can be close to God. I have a choice. I have a choice if I want to be close to him. I know that God wants to be close to us. He wants to have a personal, vital relationship with each one of us in a special way. He wants to reveal himself to us and let us know that he cares, he knows where we are, he knows what we're going through, and he can help us. In the book of Hebrews, the doctrinal part of this uh, epistle has ended right here. And the application now begins. You know, we can understand doctrine, we can understand truths, we can understand the Bible, we can study it, but if we don't ever apply it to our lives, it's not near as much value. It's wonderful to know it, but we must apply it to our lives if we want to walk with God. You see, here we find ourselves in a place that we can come into the presence of God. God invites us into his presence. This is the holy place that was so talked about in the Old Testament, the, where the presence of God was in the Holy of Holies. God has allowed us access to come in to this place. God has invited us to come into this place. The Spirit of the Lord draws us to come into this place and, and have fellowship with him. Christianity is a religion of access. We have access to the Heavenly Father. We have access to Jesus Christ. We can come into his presence. We can find him. He wants us to find him. And I thank him tonight that he allows us this access. What a privilege it is to be able to come into the very presence of the living God. You see, in the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son, even though he was away and he, was, uh, he was, had sinned and wasted all that he had, he still had access back to the Father's house. And tonight it doesn't matter where we are. If we've sinned, if we've messed up, if we went away from God, I tell you there's a place called Calvary that we can find forgiveness. We have access back to the Father. We have access to the Father's house. He will welcome us back when we repent. 
with open arms and we will be loved and cherished as before. <coughs> I thank him tonight for that church. You see, we have the privilege of dwelling in his presence. And that privilege comes because Jesus went to Calvary and died for you and I. Thank God for his goodness. You see, the privilege is for today, it's for tomorrow, it's for next week, it's for eternity. I thank God for the access, for the privilege, and it is a privilege to be able to know God. We think ourselves great if we know some <clears throat> famous person, but if we know God, how great it is. I thank him tonight for loving me, for caring, for watching over us and uh, allowing every person on this planet to have access to him if they so desire. Thank God for his blessings. <clears throat> God enables us to draw near unto him. Let us draw near, he said. Let us draw near. The writer here is encouraging us to draw near unto God. There's this boldness that comes with the, <coughs> y'all forgive me, I've, this pollen that started again is getting me again. But we have boldness that's associated with the blood of Jesus. The boldness that we can approach him, that he can be glorified in us and through us, that we can praise him. <coughs> Verse 19 tells us again, <coughs> Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Christians have liberty. We have access. The Lord enables us to be able to enter into this presence. <clears throat> Verse 20 says, the way has been prepared for us to enter. When Jesus died, the veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom to grant us access into the Father. Not only has a way been provided, but we have a guide. We have a high priest. His name is Jesus Christ. He loves us, and he draws us with his presence to enter in. The new way is described in verse 20 as a new and a living way, which Jesus has consecrated for us, which he has made for us. You see, he is the guide He's the high priest. His dignity, his uh, standing is beyond what words can describe. And he functions as our high priest, intercessor, as the one that stands before God to make intercession for us. And I don't know about you, but I need an intercessor sometimes. Sometimes I can't pray through and I need him to go before the Father for me with my problems, with my needs. And thank God he still does for each and every one of us. The ground is level at Calvary. He has enabled a way for us to come into the presence of God. You don't have to depend on a, on a pastor or a high priest or you don't have to depend on the <clears throat> evangelist or a song leader or you don't have to depend on a preacher. You can come into the presence of God yourself. The way has been made for you. I encourage you today. Pray till you pray through. Worship till you worship through to the presence of God. Get in the presence of God and allow him to love on you and touch your life. <clears throat> Even though we've been able, the scripture here tells us that certain conditions have to be met <clears throat> before we can enter in. The heart has to be right with God. We have to be born again. <clears throat> we have to be doing our very best to walk according to the statutes of God's word. We have to do our best to live a life that's pleasing unto God. We have to walk in a way that pleases Him and glorifies Him. The Bible says there gives two words, full assurance. We need to have complete faith in God. We need to trust Him in all things. No matter what our situation is, God can be trusted. We fail each other, but God never fails. We worry, we fret, sometimes we think the worst instead of the best, but when we look to the Lord and we get in His presence, our mountains become smaller. The problems kind of dwindle down. If we can pray through to the presence of God, 
because he has drawn us, we can have an assurance. I don't know about you, I went to the presence of God many times with doubts and questions, but when I prayed through into the presence of God, I tell you, I came out of the prayer closet rejoicing because God had given me the reassurance that he's still on the throne, he's still in control, he's in charge of my life, and nothing that I can't handle he will allow to come my way. I thank him tonight. We must have a good conscience. This good conscience comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God that the guilt can be gone. Not only can we be forgiven of our sins, but the guilt can be gone. I don't know about you, but I've done things in my life, and I, even though I'd, someone would forgive me, I'd feel guilty about it on and on. But thank God the guilt can be removed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and we can stand in good standing with God, and the guilt be removed, and peace can reign in our hearts. The Bible says there we must have purified bodies. We must have a dedicated and a purified body and a life that is cleansed from all the outward, degrading, bad habits that we used to do before we came to Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, he's working on each one of us to clean us up, to change us. He hasn't given up on us. He's still working on me. He's still working on you. We can meet the conditions. God does not give conditions that cannot be met. Through the blood of Jesus, we can have every condition can be met in our lives. God can be glorified. Thank God that he helps us meet those conditions. And he made a way that those conditions can be met, that we can enter into the presence of God, that we can have a relationship with him, a close relationship that we can know him. And we know that he knows us. You see, some of the things that the Lord purchased for us that's mentioned in this book, I didn't write down all these verses, but I want to mention some of the things that the book of Hebrews says that's better for us. You see, we have better blessings. Because of what Jesus did, we have better blessings than they had under the old covenant. The blessings are far greater today because we know Jesus than they had under the Old Testament where they had to offer the blood of bulls and goats and and turtle doves and all those things and they had an outward form that they went through but thank God today we have an inward experience that changes our lives and we have better blessings because of that Bible also tells us we had a better sacrifice Jesus was a better sacrifice than what was offered in the old covenant thank God for a sacrifice we don't have to bring things to, to church today and offer them on the altar and we don't have to have cattle and, and turtle doves and goats and bulls and heifers to, to sacrifice. But Jesus went to Calvary once and for all, laid down his life for us, shed his blood for you and I. We have a better sacrifice than the head of the old covenant. Thank God for Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. You see, the blood speaketh the better things. The Bible says in that verse in the 12th chapter, that the blood of Jesus speaketh of better things than the blood of Abel. Thank God the blood of Jesus still speaks today. It still cleanses sin. It still sets us free. It still breaks the chains of sin. And we can talk to Jesus Christ. We can have that relationship with him because of what Jesus did. We have a better covenant. We have a better covenant today because of what Jesus did. The covenant today. It's because Jesus went to Calvary. Over and over again I'm saying this. Can we realize that we have what we have because Jesus went to Calvary and died there for us. He died there for us and he rose again on the third day for our justification. We can enter the presence of God justified because we have this covenant. It was a covenant that was ordained by the Lord himself and Jesus paid the price to fulfill it and all we have to do is accept the covenant and we are part of the body and the family of Jesus Christ. We have a better hope today. We have a better hope today because Jesus. My hope is in Jesus Christ. My hope is not in the systems and the statues of this world. My hope's in Jesus. He is the anchor of my soul. I'm trusting him today. My hope is him. I hope one day that when I pass from this life that I end in the presence of God. That's my hope. It's a hope that purifies. It's a hope that keeps me on track. 
It's a hope that keeps me focused. It's a hope that helps me hold on through the rough times because I know that Jesus Christ is who he said he was. We have better promises. We have better promises because of what Jesus did. They had promises under the old covenant. But the promises we have today are better than the old covenant. Thank God for the promises that are true. There's also some promises there that if we don't do right, that we'll inherit those promises. But I want to inherit the promises that tell me I'm going to have eternal life. I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. I'm going to make the able, able to make heaven my home. I can have a life of purity and hope and because of the promises that Jesus has made. He's promised us he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He's promised he'll make a way where there seemeth to be no way. <clears throat> He's promised that when we lay down this life, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Thank God for the promises for the Christian. Thank God for the promises for the person that's trying to live right and walk right on this planet for the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a better substance. The Bible tells us here in the 34th verse of this 10th chapter that there is a better substance in the Lord Jesus Christ because of what he did. In the 34th verse, <clears throat> For ye had compassion of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an endearing substance. We have in heaven a better and an endearing substance. We have... Praise God, it's not just something pie in the sky by and by as the world likes to tell us, but there is substance to our hopes. There's this place called heaven that is real, that Jesus is there, the Father is there. Our, lost, our loved ones that have died before are there, that if they died in Jesus Christ, there is substance in God. There is substance in heaven. That's our hope and our purity. It's a better country, in the chapter tells us. We're looking for a better country. I don't know about you, but I think we live in the best country on this planet. But can I tell you, there's a better country I have hope in. We have some places in our country here that we can look back on the past and there's some dark places that we're kind of ashamed of. But can I tell you, there's a better country I'm headed for that there's no dark places. There's no things to be ashamed of. It, it's a hope. It's a country that we're headed to, a hope that we have. Thank God for the hope that lies before us of a place that we are going to one day to live forever and ever and ever and ever. The 11th chapter tells us we have a better resurrection. Jesus took the sting out of death. Jesus took the sting out of death, and when we are die, the sting is gone. Thank God for a better resurrection than the head of the old covenant. Jesus paid for it all. Jesus paid for us to have a better resurrection. Thank God for the resurrection and the hope that's before us. Praise his name. One of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then if we happen to be alive and remain here, we'll be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. We'll be caught up. We will not prevent them which are died already, but we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds and be with them forever to go in the presence of the Lord. Thank God for a resurrection and a hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Today, the day we live in, I don't know about you, this uh, global pandemic we're going through, I don't know about you, I'm leaning on Jesus awfully heavy right now. My heart cries out to him. You see, it's one thing to say things, it's another thing to be something. Is your heart crying out to God? Is your heart exercising its hope in the Lord Jesus Christ? Is your heart leaning toward Jesus, wanting to have a better relationship with him than you've ever had? Are you crying out to God saying, God, I need you. I'm leaning on you. I'm trusting you. God, allow me to come in your presence today that I can know you, that I can intercede for others, that I can talk to you about those that, I'm, that I have a burden for, those that need you, those that are lost and undone. Lord, help me to cry unto you for lost souls. Lord, help me to cry unto you for those in my family that are lost. Lord, help me to draw nigh unto you and have a relationship with you. You see, we can apply freshly the blood of Jesus to our hearts. He can be cleansed and renewed and made new. Thank God for the cleansing power of the blood. 
You see, when we have an uneasy conscience, it's a real barrier to having fellowship with Jesus Christ. If our conscience is uneasy, it probably means there's something going on in our life that shouldn't be. And we need to come back to Calvary again and say, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me, apply the blood again afresh and anew to my soul that, that I can arise with a new hope and a new life and, and how I'll have a desire to walk with you and talk with you. You see, Christianity is under attack in the world today like it's never been before. Thank God for a new hope. The hope is Jesus Christ. He's on our side. He's the head of the church. He's the, he's the head of our body. He's watching over us. He cares for us. He loves us. And one day soon, he's coming back. And I want to be ready to meet him. I want you to be ready to meet him. Don't allow anything to hinder you from loving and knowing Jesus Christ. Don't allow anything to hinder your relationship with Jesus don't allow anything to hinder your prayer life. Don't allow anything to hinder you reading the Word, meditating on the Word, and applying it to your life. God, help us when we read something new that goes against the grain of this old flesh. Let the flesh change and let the Word be true and every man a liar. God, help me to have the relationship with you that you want me to have. You see, we're, we settle for things sometimes way before God wants us to settle for them. He wants us to have a vital relationship with Him. He wants us to love Him with all of our heart, mind, and soul, our spirit. We have to become as little children. Lord, help us as a little child to forgive, as a little child to trust, as a little child to be hungry for the presence of God. Lord, we love you today. Forgive us, Lord, of our shortcomings. Forgive us of our sin. Forgive us, Lord, of our transgressions. Forgive us of the things that we're doing we don't even know we're doing that offends you. And Lord, help us to have a vital relationship with you. Lord, I love you today. I thank you. Today in closing, you see, the Word of God tells us, I want to read that last verse one more time. Verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Jesus is faithful. He will be faithful to you and to me and to everyone. Faithful is he that promised that we can have a relationship with him. Father, we come to you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for your many blessings on our life. Thank you for the hope and the blessings and the promises, God, that we have in you. I pray, Lord, that tonight if there's a one that is listening and their heart is not right with you, if they're lost, Lord, I pray they would cry out to you in their home, wherever they might be. Ask you for forgiveness and grace and mercy in this hour. Lord, we need you today. Lord, I need you more than I've ever needed you before. Lord, help us today. Watch over us. Keep us. Bless us, Lord. Bless this local body. Bless everyone who's listening tonight. I pray, Lord, that your blessings would remain. God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to
you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. I've seen you move. You move the mountains, and I believe I see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I believe, oh yes, I see you do it again. I see you do it again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never 
see God move again just as he has in the past. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining us tonight and we pray that we see many of you there on Sunday morning at our drive-in service. Have a blessed week.